On your phone right now, how many apps do you have? Now, how many of those are experiences that can only be had on a phone? I know on mine, most are just links to websites and social media. Almost all of them, and this weather app my grandpa told me to get. Today, phones are really nothing more than devices to connect to our social platforms. But it wasn't always like this. When the iPhone came out in 2007, everything changed. This was a brand new computing experience unlike anything anyone had ever used before. Before the iPhone, if you were going to interface with technology of any kind, you had to sit down and push buttons to make inputs. Those inputs would then be displayed on a screen. But now you can interact directly with the screen, with your finger, as if actually touching what was there. Touch screens existed before the iPhone, but they'd never been done so accurately and so predominantly. For better or for worse, there is not another way to interact with the iPhone, only touch. Not only this, now your computer can be moved. It is held, and it knows if it's being moved, shaken, rotated, and can react to all of those things. At this point in history, this is the most personal that we've ever been able to be with a device. The only question was, how are we going to use all these features? What can you even do with rotations and accelerometers? You can drink beer! iBeer is a perfect example of just how unfamiliar this new technology was to us. It seems like such a silly, silly thing today. But back then, a device that could respond to your movement and rotations was a concept nobody had ever seen before. iBeer used the accelerometer in a tangible way that everybody could wrap their head around. Finally, we can drink beer on the computer. I thought you were in rehab! iBeer was one of the many apps to take advantage of the accelerometer. Lightsaber Unleashed was a lightsaber app that you could hold and wave around, and it would make Make different lightsaber sounds as if you were holding a real life lightsaber. Mini Clip Ping Pong is a game where you had to balance a ping pong paddle with your iPod in your hand like you would in real life. Like I said, this technology was so exciting and new. The app store was filled to the brim with people just trying things out. Even just touch was still such a novelty at this point. I don't really like beer. I prefer self-harm. Finger Cut was an app with a saw that you could touch and the blood would come out. Self-harm is very bad. If you are feeling very bad and you are feeling like you are wanting to do that, don't do that. Call the, this number. Please? Or you can use this app. No, don't. No, call this number. Touch Grind was a skateboarding app where you can't see where the fuck you're going because it's top down so you can stand on it like a tech deck. This game seemed to make total sense at the time, but looking at what we have now and looking back, what the fuck were we doing here? Can you imagine skateboarding in real life like this? Copyright was also not nearly as strict as it is today. I remember playing meme games, Nyan Cat games. Here's another lightsaber app called Lightsaber that is definitely not licensed. It felt a lot more like flash games at this point. Just experiments and trials of ideas that people made just because they wanted to make them. It was the wild wild west. There was no rules. Do whatever the fuck you want. And they did. Not just individuals, but companies too. There's a reason Apple had the slogan there's an app for that. Because there was. The iPhone was the new thing. If you didn't have an app, who the fuck even are you? This is a discontinued rabbits app where the rabbit is in your phone and you can fuck with him. This is one of the way cooler ones. Here's a similar one with SpongeBob instead. This one sucks a lot more. This is all you can do. You can touch him. There were apps that just told you facts. I have this one on my old iPod that just gave me April Fool's Day prank ideas. This one's just a PNG of drums that plays drum sounds when touched. So just silly things. But they enthralled us so much because we'd never been able to do anything like this before. You could never touch a set of drums like this. It was always a click. Well, I guess you could in the real world. Most of these that I've talked about are just funny tests to see what a phone can do. But among all of these were some really, really well done and beloved series. Glow Hockey was one of my favorite games. It's just simple air hockey, but two people could play it at once on the same device. Talking Carl was another that I really liked. It was the precursor to things like like Talking Tom and Talking Ben. It was just this weird red guy who you could just kind of fuck with. I really liked fucking with little guys. But by far, my favorite app of the 2010s was a little square called Tap Tap Revenge. Tap Tap was a rhythm game similar to Guitar Hero, but with three dots that you tap in sync to music. This is the app of the early iPhone. When it first launched, within 20 days, it reached 1 million downloads. And a year after it launched, a study was done that concluded one in every three iPhone users had it installed on their phone. I read all that straight off Wikipedia. It was the first of its kind, an app that perfectly fit the iPhone and was easy for anyone to get into. For a time, it was the most downloaded app on the entire app store, over Facebook, over Skype, over 
everything. And for good reason, it was so fun. It synced with iTunes so they could use all the latest trendy songs. Each song had its own unique theme. It was so good. So good that they ended up making 23 of them. There was Tap Tap, Tap Tap Revenge, Tap Tap Revenge 2, Tap Tap Revenge 3, Tap Tap Dance, Tap Tap Lady Gaga. The rest were individually branded artist tap taps that was usually done as a promotion to coincide with the artist's album releasing. So not actually 23 games, but still kind of. The beginning of mobile feels very comparable to the beginning of the internet. A wild wild west with no rules and no guidelines. Where everybody from one guy making a beer app to corporations like Disney and Nickelodeon are all trying to figure out what an app even was and how to best use this emerging platform. I'm so happy that we decided the best use for it was this. These are the trailblazers, the pioneers that defined what an app should and could be. Today, nobody cares about drinking beer or cutting their finger. Hardly any apps even use the accelerometer these days. When's the last time that you ever tilted or shook your phone or really used it in any way that you couldn't just do on a computer? The mobile experience has kind of smoothed out into just another way to access Twitter and TikTok. The mobile market is completely different now. There's still games and there's still things to do, but phones are a lot less exciting now. But it's really fun to look back on those early days when the idea of a mobile touchscreen computer was fresh and new and something as simple as pretending to sip beer could be so enthralling. When we were still trying to figure out what to do with this new frontier. When every piece of technology looked like this. When the internet wasn't just four websites. When Rage comics were all the rage. And when Domo wallpapers were running shit. Look at my camera roll on this thing. I miss it.